actually sees them. Excellent. Uh, let's welcome him. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm doing software development for eight years, and my three years, last three years, was basically doing Elixir development and management Elixir teams. I am a CTO of company of Eden Lab, and I will talk about how we change the Elixir or the healthcare system in Ukraine, first of all, and how Elixir helped us and what problems we overcome and what was the pros and cons of this decision. But quick note, it was really fine, <laughs> first of all. But uh, let's talk about a little bit of history. First, my first talk about Elixir was three years ago. Um, and I just want to say thanks for the Elixir community who helped me and do this all three years pass really fun and really helpful. And now I am from the local Ukrainian weirdo who pronounce unknown languages, uh, staying in this stage, talking about how the Elixir working in the big, really large project that hopefully will save a lot of lives. Um, Let's talk maybe what is Ukraine and what is going on around our healthcare system. So, um, the health um, is a centralized system that will contain all, a lot of data about all healthcare system of Ukraine. That it will be containing the information about the patients the information about the doctors, clinics, etc. And what is going now in Ukraine before how the money will go to the clinics was not so easily tracked and not so easily um, defined because it was a problem when we got uh, the Ministry of Social say that hey, this is clinic, there is uh, uh, hundreds of people living here and giving the money for these people. But it, can, it was a problem because um, it, in sometimes in big cities, there is a lot of difference, it's, it, there was a difference between uh, how and how many people really lived around this clinic, so a lot of clinics was uh, underpaid, so we got some problems with the uh, health care in the patients itself. So now uh, the Ukrainian government decided that we will create the centralized system that will contain the deals between patients and doctors. And based on these contracts, uh, we can calculate the sum of funds that need to be provided to this clinic to uh, to this clinic basically do their work. Um, let's <laughs> yeah, and we started developing this project a year ago. Uh, in last summer, we had the soft release when the system was in. A test run, we tested all the processes. And 1st of April of this year, we start real production for the whole Ukraine. So for now, it's more than 6 million uh, patients registered in the system. There is more than 200,000 uh, doctors. And it's running pretty big, and we always if we are looking on the any graphics in our system, it's going really up exponentially. So how this system works? So it's basically what I know is the largest open source governmental Excel project. And maybe it's the large, largest production open source system on Elixir on GitHub. I tried to find any other one but regarding the numbers and regarding the GitHub information, this one's the biggest one. 
So uh, now this project contains of 11 Elixir wrappers and uh, more than uh, 21 contributors to, to it and already running in production and this co code can be discovered. You can find it on a GitHub, discover new ways how to do things and it's basically really a uh, great open source project with a lot of documentation, a lot of issues, and I am encourage you to maybe spare some free time and help us do the right thing and uh, increase your knowledge in Elixir. So how this basically works on the architecture stuff? Uh, we have the ground component that we call it integration layer. This component is uh, a general system point that we get all requests from the gateway and then passes to the different microservices around, around the system. So um, I don't go to the de details what this, the system do, but I want to know some main architecture components, concepts that we are running microservices, but we decide that all processes must be controlled by integration layer. So we have a single point, uh, not, <laughs> not a failure, but we know that all any of the components must be easily scaled. And all other microservices around the integration layer is simple crude applications uh, with some utility logic. So <laughs> we know and for easy readability and for the concept, you always can find how the process uh, looks from ground up. So if you want to find how the patients created, you go to the integration layer and found uh, how the other microservices are integrated and working to satisfy this process. Um, yeah, simple comic about that. Yeah, we create a great architecture, but uh, if we create a lot of code, we need to properly manage it to not to blow, blow up with uh, some errors. So I will focus on how uh, generic patterns regarding our code base we use. So for the readability concern, we still keep with the con context uh, that are uh, really used by Phoenix community, but also we decided that any logical operation uh, needs to have its own uh, separate file that we can always find it uh, underneath any context and any action can be described in these files. Also, in each context we have the schema file and uh, files that basically have CRUD functions for the actor and other utility functions that are uh, used in uh, each operation that happens in this context. Um, the next principle is the readability. Later, when I was given a talk, I was having a lot of slides on how and which style guides we follow and which decisions was made uh, and why. But now uh, we're living in the epoch of mixed format that really simplifies all my slides <laughs> in this presentation because it creates unified, um, unified format for um, and, and really defines how things need to be uh, done regarding the style. So we defining that we use this and uh, do all the other formal steps to, to success on this. Uh, later, we decide that we will be avoiding writing our own DSLs and use only Actor and Phoenix uh, because in our experience, DSL is a really good thing to do, but it requires a lot of time to do it properly. 
So uh, on this level, we decide that we don't use or we won't be creating any DSLs for our intentional use. And for newcomers, that they don't need to understand the new DSL to, to participate in the project. They just need to understand the global ecosystem ones and the Elixir code, basically. Uh, how we do our documentation? Uh, we decided that all APIs need to be well documented and we use API blueprint for this. And every request and response have their own JSON schema. So we always uh, knew what, uh, and have the documentation, what needs to be passed to the service and what response we um, expect. So this, uh, even by using this, we uh, integrate it in our tests. So we test that response is uh, re related to the proper JSON schema that we have in our documentation. And that the API, API itself are 100% uh, uh, equivalent to the JSON schema we have in a, in a request. Also, we're trying to use the type spec as much as we can, but it's always a tricky question. For myself, I've always tried to do this, but we still don't agree as a team that we will uh, go 100% of type spec in the stuff. Mm. For the release management, uh, I'm, we definitely go the simple case that semantic version is our king. Um, we got the automatic version bump uh, based on a commit. So you create the commit tag with a uh, minor major uh, patch and CI automatically bump the version. And uh, what the interesting stuff in some time of our project, we uh, found that we need to create uh, versioning of our API, basically version one, that we still need to maintain a version two that will be go further and break some stuff. So in this point, we created two umbrella applications uh, in in the project that was wasn't umbrella in this time, and place the all stuff that related to version one in version one umbrella application and version two umbrella application for the stuff that will go on the future. Um, we use some libraries to don't repeat uh, yourself. Some are interesting, I will continue on these libraries further, but um, it's always the pain that um, you need to have a strictly defined way, if you are working with the API, you are always need to have the proper API answers, and we use eView for this, and I'm strictly encouraged to check these libraries also. Um, okay, so the most interesting part, this is how we deploy such a large Elixir service. Um, for the deployment, we use Kubernetes. Uh, for the creating uh, Elixir uh, releases, we use Distory. It's basically no-brain solution in this kind of part. Um, so it's the process is really simple. First of all, in each commit, we uh, create a new release that uh, build up uh, using the Docker that push on the Docker Hub. Uh, going through the, all the CI stuff, the tests, the coveralls, et cetera, et cetera, that we defined in our project. And first of all, if this, um, if this uh, dev environment, we also do a continuous deploy. So every uh, commit on the master is deployed on the dev version. So we always have the latest commit 
uh, on the dev servers. Uh, yes. Uh, also, regarding the schema of deployment, we use the uh, uh, blue green deployment. So, what this basically means uh, when we want to redeploy one of our servers, Kubernetes create a new pod that is basically our new version doc of Docker container checks if this version alive for one minute, wait until the, all the migrations and all other startup stuff in this pod um, are in, it's, and it is running, and then, and only then, killing the previous pod. Um, also for separating and manage all our packages for Kubernetes, we use the Helm. This is basically your package manager for Kubernetes. Each our ser service are a Helm chart. This is a basically a YAML description what containing in this uh, in this service. So there is a API, database, etc., etc. And by using this instrument. This instrument gives us ability to create different uh, values config for different environments. So, for example, the dev environments will get the, all the dev settings uh, in the to, to the Elixir release, and uh, also this tool provides really nifty uh, one-liners to deploy service in a production when we are doing it by our own hands, not the CI. Um, uh, um, also, this project required us to develop some really good uh, services that you can use in your project. I will highlight some, some of them. First one is uh, Misreal. Um, this is authentication and role management service. So it contains some of the basic and some of the functions that in the slide. And you can find it on the GitHub URL. Um, but now it's going further. We're adding uh, digital signing verification to it. So we can also check it in the GitHub. Uh, the aisle that is media storage uh, manager and have the different ab ability to store uh, your media content in two, two of these backends and generate the signed URL for each of uh, for each of your files. And man, this is a template rendering engine. Uh, that basically microservice that you can uh, contact by the API and it will generate the proper markup, HTML, etc., for you. Um, I highly encourage you to take a look to, uh, to this organization that cr have a lot of um, container, uh, a lot of uh, Elixir projects in there. So you can check it out, and uh, we use all of this stuff that open source it in these two organizations. Um, quick epilogue regarding uh, what this project was. And first of all, when I'm thinking, did Elixir give us some problems during this development? No. It was a really fun experience using Elixir to build such a big project. Um, we didn't get any problems, and this is not the case if you are now thinking that you need more mature language or the language with a lot of packages. You do don't need to think about this because uh, we have the example how the Elixir help us build such a big projects and don't have any kind of issues 
with the elixir or the uh, beam virtual machine so um, what I want to say is that uh, we always um, try to find a new a new ways how to uh, go further with this project the next step what we are thinking now is uh, to change uh, the HTTP uh, protocol between the microservices to the RPC and if you and we as a team always looking for new decisions and new contributions um, thank you very much <laughs>